helicopters deployed for emergency medical services have saved thousands of lives worldwide. The difference the aircraft can make is especially acute in places such as Western Canada, where less than half the population lives in major urban areas with easy access to hospitals. This is where the STAR service comes in, or to give the not-for-profit group its full name, Shock Trauma Air Rescue Service, which has been operating for almost four decades now. We actually contract with three separate provincial governments in the provision of rescue and care of the critically ill and injured. And so this is primarily a medical organization that uses aircraft to help us look after the most vulnerable and the most critically ill. The STARS team believes that a key aspect of its effectiveness is its use of a common fleet of aircraft, namely the Airbus H145. This gives it a lot of flexibility and improves its responsiveness. Our ability to be as effective and ef efficient as an organization is all about anybody from any province that's trained by STARS can get in that aircraft and fly it. Any nurse or medic or physician can get in the back and when they go to reach for something, it's in the identical position in every aircraft. So you think, well, how common is that? So when you have a really bad mass casualty incident in Canada, you throw all your resources at it, and sometimes that means bringing our crew from another province to help respond. So you can imagine how helpful it is that no matter what, no matter where this aircraft comes from, our pilots can step inside at three o'clock in the morning and know where everything is. And in times of constraint with healthcare and what we've been through since COVID, you can imagine that having flexibility around your nursing or medic staff or your physicians allows you to pull and steal from all over Western Canada and still remain operational. Geography is destiny in many ways, and we're trying to remove that factor. So if you're in a rural or remote community and you don't have access to the care that you'd get in a big center like Atlanta, how do we change that? And so this is one of the ways that we do it. So when I say, people say to me, who owns STARS? I say the community owns STARS. When a call comes in seeking assistance for an urgent case, STARS crews are ready to be dispatched to the scene very quickly, using 10 aircraft dispersed across six bases. It is fundamentally like a flying intensive care unit. So the people that work in the back are at a skill level of I would describe as a nurse, you would work in a, in a tertiary or quaternary level center for a minimum of five years, and then we train you for a year. As a medic, you'd be a critical care paramedic for a minimum of five years, and then we would train you to our standard over the next year. They have skills that most physicians have, and we've expanded their practice to the limits of the law. We often describe the environment as a hostile environment, it's noisy, it's not stable, you're making critical decisions and it's just the two of you and that patient. And so we do simulation training on and on and on and on, hundreds of hours for our crew. And a lot of it is training them in distraction. So noise, environment, all of that, but how do you make those critical decisions every time? So very much like aviation uses simulation for all, and we've learned so much in medicine from aviation. We train the crew very similarly in the back so that they've got muscle memory. At three o'clock in the morning, when the worst thing is happening, they know exactly what to do. This is a very high risk environment, as I'm sure you appreciate. There's nothing higher risk than landing at night to a scene you've never landed at before. You don't know what all the environmental hazards are. So they train as a team, sterile cockpit. Everybody's looking for hazards. And, you know, knock on wood, we've been in this business for 38 years, incident-free. And we take that very seriously. And a great deal of that is this team, this cohesive team that cannot hesitate to put their hand up and say, not safe. Within the confined space of the helicopter cabin, the STARS teams have access to equipment and supplies to deal with those most serious life-threatening situations. We've got everything you could possibly need to look after a critically ill patient. So we have a ventilator, all the intubation equipment, all the cardiac drugs and supportive um, means to keep a patient alive for the period of transport. So you name it, we have it. 
They also have bags, so when they know what they're going for, we'll switch to pediatric equipment, we'll add more equipment. We routinely now carry ultrasound. We routinely now uh, ha carry blood. Um, and so depending on what the scenario is, they may unload or reload. So if we know we're gonna take two patients, they change the equipment, but it's all done with the intent to be airborne in under 10 minutes. In assessing how to give the patient the best odds for survival, the STARS teams are empowered to make critical decisions in the moment. Some of it is, there's no question, the golden hour is the golden hour. The patient that has to get to definitive care and time and only time matters. You know, in some situations it's stroke, in some situations not in strokes, in some situations in cardiac. So we've learned a lot. Sometimes we call it, uh, we need to stay and play. And meaning the biggest thing that we can provide is getting their hands to you. And so if we can get out and provide the care, maybe we can leave you and come back. Maybe we can get you to a better stabilized state so that transport is safer. So we're learning and evolving as, as the medicine changes and the environment changes. The task of saving lives with aircraft is costly, but priceless to those on the receiving end. And that is apparent in how the STAR service is funded. Some money comes from provincial governments, but that doesn't cover everything. We fundraise the rest. So that community piece, they really do own it. And so when you look around the aircraft, you'll see the names of companies. So a lot of the big companies in Canada, so if you're in utilities, oil and gas, mining, agriculture, your employees are out working in rural and remote areas. And so they donate money to us because we are in, in effect a safety net for their employees. If I'm a mom with three little ones and I'm worried because I live too far from the big pediatric hospital, this is insurance. We've had a few mothers come and say, we gotta raise some money for you. And so I'm telling you, it's as generic as, or grassroots as bake sales to golf tournaments, every means, little kids donating their birthday money so there's a big accountability for us to be great stewards of our money and to provide the very highest level of care. So I say always, the patient in front of you gets 100% of our attention and we'll do anything to make sure that you survive.